Hey, and welcome everyone to our video guide. It's Ned from Caspio. In today's quick video, we're going to learn about triggered actions and how they can be used to automate a lot of procedures in the back end so that we don't have to process too many manual tasks. Now, there are many use cases that can benefit from using triggered actions, but in today's video, we're going to talk about how we can make changes to our contacts. And when we make those changes, we want to be able to store those changes in a completely separate table which I'm calling my history log table. So let's quickly take a look at each one of our tables. In my contacts table, you will see I have a unique field at the very top. I'm calling it contact ID. We have the user ID field because I want to be able to track which user is adding my contacts. And then we have all the other information that you will typically see that pertains to the contacts. In my history log table, we have almost identical fields plus a few more. So you will see we have the log ID the change log. It's a unique field. We have the user ID because I need to know which user made the change. We have the contact ID. We have to know for what contact changes are made. And then we have the date change. We want to know when that change was made. And finally, we have all the fields which we saw inside a contacts table so that we can store all the changes for each field. Next, let's go back out to the tables menu. Now, because my contacts table is the main table, that's where I add my contacts and also make my updates. We need to build our trigger on top of that table. So we click on more, click on triggered actions, create the trigger. And then you're going to be able to see these elements on the left hand side that you can click inside and you can drag these elements over to your canvas and snap them in place, kind of like Lego pieces inside the canvas. Now in Caspio, there are three types of events that you can run the trigger on based on insert of data, update of data, and delete of data. I want to copy the information to my history log table when I insert something, and also when I update something inside my contacts table. Those are my two events that I want to select. Then you're gonna click on the action element and use the insert widget and snap that in place. Next, you want to select the table where you want to copy that information to. And in my use case today, we're gonna to copy that over to our history log table. Next step is to click on the gear icon and choose the select statement. And then you want to select the data from the inserted table. The inserted table refers to the table where the data is being inserted into, and that is our contacts table. Now in the future, if you want to do something conditional with the where statement, you can include that. Today, we're gonna to click on the gear icon and go ahead and disable the where statement and just move that over to our trash can and let go. Next step is to go ahead and expose all of your fields from the history log table. So the fields on the left hand side are going to be from the history log table. And now you want to map out the fields from the contacts table as the final step. So you click on the data element, you move the field, snap that in place and map that out with the user ID field. Now, instead of you going to data and dragging this element one at a time, there's a simple trick in Caspio. If you right click, click on duplicate, Snap that in place and it's a little bit faster, but you still have to duplicate that and repeat that step a few times until you've mapped out all of your fields. But once you set this up once, you never have to worry about it again. Every time you make an update to your contact or add a new contact, that information is going to be copied over to our history log table. State to state. And last but not least, we have the zip code field that we can map out. So looking at this one more time really quickly, when I insert and update something into my contacts table, we're simply copying the information over to our history log table. Once you're done, go ahead and save, give it a name, update history log table for contacts, save and enable. And let's go ahead and simulate this. I will go into my contacts table now and add one sample contact. I have one user in my user table, which happens to be John Doe for this application, but my contact information is going to be Mary Smith. Let's say Mary at test.com, phone number, something random, random address, city, state, maybe New York, zip code. And then we're going to click underneath that to save our changes. Now, the expected behavior now is once I add my contact inside this table, at the same time, I want to be able to insert that data inside my history log table. So let's navigate over to our history log table, open it, and we should be able to see that same exact information. 
But in this table, we can see when we added the contact, for which contact, which belongs to Mary, which user who happens to be John Doe, we know who added that contact. So we're always keeping track of all of the changes. Now, let's say we go back to the contacts table again, and we make an update to Mary's information. So I will change maybe the last name to something different. Maybe we can change the email to abc.com. We'll change the phone number, maybe the address field. And that's it for now. Once I save my changes, you may be thinking, well, we don't want to override the previous record. We want to know what we had before. Well, now the expected behavior in the history log table is to insert that update so that we have a historical log of all the changes. So let's navigate over to our history log table and what you're going to see. We still preserve the original entry, and we also now keep track of all of the changes for that contact ID, who made the change, when that change was made, and then we can now track and see what the changes are. Now, where it gets a lot more exciting is when you start configuring the triggers and making them more complex. Maybe do something conditional. I'm going to show you just one quick example of how you can add something conditional. So if we go back to our contacts table, and let's just say we add another field called active, and we're going to turn that into a checkbox, yes and no. We'll save that table. The idea here is I only want to copy that information over to my history log table if the checkbox is checked. So we go back to our triggered actions. We're going to click on edit. And as I said before, if you want to do conditional, you click on the gear icon. You say where. You include that. And now we can include the field which is our active checkbox, and we want that to equal to true. So we go to logic, we move over this widget, and now the data is only going to be copied over if the checkbox equals to true. In other words, if the checkbox is checked, only then we copy the data. If you want to continue building even more conditional logic, you can even do more. So if we go back to logic, and let's say we want to include an and comparison type, so now we have if the checkbox is checked, but let's say you also want to copy the data five days after you've added the contact into the database. Let's copy this over. So we're going to duplicate. Let's remove this. And now we're going to compare two dates that they equal to five. I will remove true. And then under date, let's use difference in. We're going to snap that in place. Difference in days, as I mentioned. So now you can include the field. So let's go to data, include the field. We have date created, and we want to compare date created to today's date. So we're going to go back to date, include a timestamp. Let me zoom out a little bit so that we can see this. And then we want to simply just say a number here. We're going to go to data, include the number widget, and we're going to just change that to five. Now what's going to happen is only copy the data to the history log table if the checkbox is checked. And if five days have passed since we created the contact inside the initial entry. Or you can change the logical operator from AND to OR if you'd like. There's so many things you can do with triggers from loops to variables, and you can include all of that inside these triggered actions to create even more robust and sophisticated automation. Thank you for watching our video. If you would like to see a more in-depth guide on triggered actions, I have two additional videos that you can watch where we dive into triggered actions in much more detail. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.